Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Maryam Hojati. Currently, I'm assistant professor in the Department of Civil Construction and Environmental Engineering at the University of New Mexico. Today, I want to briefly review one of the projects that I did with a team of architects and engineers during my postdoc at the Pennsylvania State University. The project was part of NASA Centennial Challenge of 3D Printed Habitat on Mars. This project studies the developing of the 3D printing machine consisting of a robot arm and a pump-driven printer designing and developing printable either cement or cement-free concrete, and designing a tool path and controlling printing process. This presentation review the progress and achievement that we had in terms of material and printing process over two and a half years of this project at the Pennsylvania State University. Here is my contact information. In case that you have any question, I would be happy to answer your question at the end of the presentation. You can also email me your question at the end. 3D printing, also known as additive manufacturing, is the process of making three-dimensional solid object from a digital file. 3D printing has been increasing in popularity in many diverse fields of industries such as aerospace, automotive, biomedical, energy, and even food. And it has been estimated to be the next industrial revolution because of the quick and cheap production of objects with simple to intricate design and geometry. This slide shows general idea for 3D printing, including generating the 3D three-dimensional digital file or CAD model, slicing the geometry into layers in appropriate directions, converting the object into a slice of data for the machine, and sequentially sending the data for the machine building the physical to build the physical object, as we see here. Construction is one of the largest industries in the world and it's worth almost $10 trillion. But construction has suffered for decades from remarkably poor productivity compared to other sectors of industry. So how about using this new technology in construction? The question is that, can we print building? Yes, sure we can. And basically it's the reason that we are all here today. Compared to conventional methods of construction, 3D printing in construction has the potential of automation to improve the productivity of this industry. It would reduce the construction cost, time, material waste, and energy. It would also facilitate the fabrication of geometrically complex structures. So what is the application? Here is a list of some of the application of 3D printing and construction. First of all, it could be uh, uh, first of all, it could be used for emergency housing and for those who are the victims of natural or man-made disaster. For low income or affordable, affordable housing, it could minimize the waste material and energy. And it also helps us with printing of functionally graded material. The last but not least is related to the space colonies, which is the focus of my today presentation. There are many arguments have been made for and against space colonization. The two most common in favor of colonization are survival of human civilization and additionally the availability of additional resources in a space that could enable expansion of human society. NASA and its partner were holding a two and a half million competition to build a three-dimensional printed habitat for deep space exploration. They invited the idea from industry and academia to help and bring new horizon to this challenge. NASA designed a multi-phases challenge to, first of all, speed up the adaption of this 3D printing technology in the Earth construction project, and secondly, make some advancement for habitation of deep space 
Penn State was one of the participants in this school project. Penn State started this NASA project in January 2017 by forming an intent disciplinary team of students and faculties from different disciplines and departments. So what I'm presenting today is here a teamwork done by this team that you can see their name and faces in this slide. So the interdisciplinary team studies the relationship between three different but interdependent subsystem related to the material design and system. We started this project in early 2017. Initial work was conducted using a smaller robot. A smart Hobart mixer was used to mix the material. This slide shows different parts of the mechanical system. The 3D printed ma ma machine mainly consists of the built-in pump of extruding the material and an industrial six axis robotic arm, which was ABB robot. It provides various range of movement in different axes for us. We also use 15 millimeter uh, nozzle for printing the material. But how about the material? Certainly we couldn't transport cement to Mars. And also because there is limited source of calcium bearing material on Mars, producing earth cement would be impossible. Our strategy for the NASA project was to maximize the use of indigenous material and resources. So let's take a look at Martian regolith that can be used for construction on Mars. Underneath the layer of dust on Mars surface uh, mostly consists of volcanic basalt rock. So this basalt rock could be a great resource for making Martian concrete. Additionally, NASA studies indicate that kaolinite is a phase available on Mars in a specific location. Kaolinite is a layered silicate clay mineral that could be calcined to form metakaolin. Metakaolin could be another source for making concrete on Mars. The Martian regolith holds sodium and silicon compounds as well. And also the Martian study indicates that the Martian regolith also contains 2% water in frozen state. So we assume that we are able to use this water for construction. Considering the composition of indigenous Martian material and minerals in uh, Mars, uh, we designed a geopolymer-based concrete and we call the material Marscrete. The material was successfully used in some levels of NASA project. This is the composition of the uh, geopolymer burst material or Mars grid that we use for some, seven, some levels of the NASA project. At the initial step, we spent quite good time to adapt our material and system for 3D printing. We designed different materials with different rheological uh, characteristics. Additionally, we played with different parameters in terms in printing system, such as speed, printing a speed, size of nozzle, power of pump, and design of different types of tool paths to be able to successfully 3D print uh, cone, cylinder, and beam for level one and two of phase two NASA project. For third level of the NASA, of phase two of NASA project, we upgraded our printing system and use a larger robotic arm together with a dual system of mixer and pump that you can see in this slide. This slide shows the dome which was 3D printed in the last level of phase two. As you might see, some form work was also used but finally removed by the robot after material was set. Penn State also participated in the third phase of NASA 3D printed habitat challenge. This phase was also multi-level challenge and I will quickly review different structures that we printed in this phase of the NASA project. The main goal and focus of NASA 3D uh, 
NASA third phase was on automation and minimizing the human involvement during the construction process. In the first level, the team uh, were asked to digitally construct a two by three meter foundation. The goal was to print uh, the entire slab autonomously without any human intervention. So after 3D printing, the quality of printed surface in terms of flatness and levelness was evaluated and also the impact test was conducted to assure the mechanical performance of the printed uh, structure. The next level of NASA project was related to the 3D printing of cylindrical tank in an autonomous process. NASA asked the teams uh, to evaluate the quality of the printing and also conduct a hydrostatic test to measure the leakage of um, water over 15 minutes. Penn State successfully passed this level of challenge as well. And you can see the uh, printed uh, tank in this slide. So level three and four of phase three of this challenge was about design and build sustainable shelter for humans to live on Mars. In level three, the team were asked to design a virtual construction for Martian habitats. The team were asked to design a 1,000 square feet of living space for four astronauts include a lift support, MEP safety and entry and exit system. For the virtual level of the competition, our design concept was based on the design of low cost housing on Earth using parametric beam design and additive manufacturing. Furthermore, the design concept also considered the maximum angle that can be printed without formwork the angle wall that we find by doing so many uh, tests was 70 degree. The minimum wall thickness was designed to be two to three feet to protect against radiation and provide maximum stru structural stability. Uh, the finite element analysis also evaluate the tensile and compressive strengths considering if the interior uh, building would be pressurized. And among multiple different design options that we had, we choose one to uh, illustrate our concept as we see here. So this is the one, the habitat that we choose for the virtual construction. Finally, the final phase level of phase three of NASA challenge was about constructing of one third scale of design habitat. To consider the robotic arm reach of our system, we selected the left side design to be printed for the actual construction. To reach the autonomous construction, we added some parts to our mechanical system, as you can see in this slide. So here we have a short video, which this short video, which shows how the printing system worked and uh, in the printing area where habitat will be printed. We needed a 1000 liter capacity water tank and water pump, a large silo for feeding the dry mix into the smaller silo, small silo for feeding the dry mix into mixer, we had a conveyor belt to transport the dry mix between the silos and also to take the dry mix from the small silo to mixer. Mixer and pump, which is a machine for mixing the dry mix with water and extruding uh, the material. Uh, and we had two robots, one of them, were, both of them were ABB robots. The robot one was to guide the extruder nozzle along the generated tool pass and print the habitat. And robot two was an industrial uh, ABB robot again, 
it tasked with the placement of the prefab hatch component during the printing. We also have some prefab hatch component to be placed by robot two during the printing. And the last level of phase three of NASA project was done in Caterpillar Center in Peoria in Illinois. Here you can see some pictures of the process. This slide also shows a short video of construction of one third scale habitat that we designed for Mars construction. So after the entire habitat was printed, the NASA team did a couple of tests to evaluate the 3D printed structure, including the quality test, smoke test, uh, impact test, and the crush test, and to make sure the printed material meet the defined requirements by the NASA judge. All of our structure passed the test successfully and we were able to be one of the winner in this NASA project. So while you are watching the video, I could answer some question because I guess after that, the next speaker gonna start his presentation. So please let me know if you have any question while you are watching the video. So this is where the second ABB robot placed the prefab hatch without any human uh, involvement or intervention. As you can see, the robots trained well to place all of the opening during the construction process. All right, thank you very much. We do have a couple of questions that are coming in. The first question is, was there a reinforcement requirement? So I, I didn't hear you because there is some extra noise. What is the question again? Okay, is that your, maybe you could, okay. And the first question is, was there a reinforcing requirement? Could you hear that? Oh, the reinforcement. We use some level of fibers in our material, yes. So we use some fibers. However, it didn't provide a considerable amount of uh, tensile strength, but it was good enough for this size of, or this scale of uh, construction. And was this um, um, polymeric fibers? Yes. Okay. So you, do have you can ask more questions, sorry, because- yeah. I'm gonna ask Yes, there's a couple that's coming in. I'm going to, to ask them right now. Right. Um, the next question is, can this process happen under cold temperatures on Mars? So the material that we designed, it results in so the chemical reaction because of uh, when uh, the chemical reaction, it was highly exothermic. It means it uh, liberates or generates large amount of heat. So we assume that that heat would be good enough to initiate the chemical reaction. But considering the different ambient condition that we have on Mars, we should provide some extra um, uh, like facility to make sure we are able to print on the surface of Mars to consider the uh, temperature, maybe even some other thing like pressure or gravity, which is completely different compared to the Earth. Okay, thank you very much. And if anyone has like follow-up questions to their questions, please just go ahead and type them in. Um, the next question is, does NASA plan to start using this on Mars right now? So I, there are so many questions behind the NASA um, construction habitat on Mars. So there are so many teams are working in this project. So for now, we were just, NASA tried to speed up the digital construction or 3D printing uh, in the construction on the Earth project to experience uh, more about how we can do autonomous construction for the Earth project. Still, there are so many questions that stayed unanswered, and they should be answered maybe in the next level of the NASA project. So this was the very first step to make habitation or colonization in other um, planets. But I guess for the future, there are so many other questions that should be answered. 
Could you elaborate? You stated, like, what do you see are the, the top, you know, two or three biggest challenges now moving forward? So, first of all, the ambient condition on the Mars are completely different than the Earth. One of them is gravity. The other one is temperature. So these are something. The other thing is about the autonomous construction. We don't have that level of experience yet for the autonomous construction when there is no human really on uh, like the construction side. We need more experience to make sure we are able to pass all of those limitations. So it was a start, but for the future, we need to just answer or solve all of the problem related to autonomous construction, to material, because we don't want to transport material to Mars, right? So we should make sure we are able to process the material which is available on Mars surface. Uh, autonomously with no labor work uh, to produce the ingredients for the construction on Mars. Thank you. We have a lot more questions. We have about four minutes left, so I'm going to, you know, call them out <laughs> for you. The next question is, what was the strength of the material? So we did so several tests. So we have uh, compressive strength test. We also did the flexural strength test. Uh, I believe what we measured, if I recall correctly, so we measured the two days a strength of material based on the NASA requirement. And I guess the two day a strength of the material, compressive strength was about 20 megapascal. In terms of flexural strengths, I don't remember the value, but I could uh, provide some documents maybe later for you to see what was the flexural strengths. So part of the NASA project was about 3D printing of the beams by adding the reinforcement. So we did also that test, but to be honest, I don't remember the exact number that we get uh, from the flexural test. No, that is completely understandable. And anyone, I guess, who would like to know the specific number, they could perhaps contact you. We yeah. have some questions regarding cracking due to cold joints and delamination due to lateral loads. Could you comment a little bit on that? Sure. So one of the big problem in digital construction is related to the cold joint. And so for this level of construction, as you can see here, we did the construction over three days. So everything was done over three days. So we had some level of coin joint. And when the construction was done, NASA did some tests. They crushed the 3D printed uh, habitat. And we saw that most of the failure happened in the cold joint. You can see in the last part of this video that most of the Failure was happened because of the very weak joint between two layers. And so here is where they did the crush test. And after the crush test, we had the chance to take a look at what's going on. And as you can see, most of or the weakest part of the structures were in the interlayer bond between two layers. So this is one of the questions that we need to answer. And uh, we need to have more experience about that over time. So at that time, we noticed that one of the biggest challenge and weakness point for our constructed uh, habitat was on the interlayer bond between two layers. So it is the weakest point and needs to have been characterized well and understood well about how we can fix this problem and make it close to conventional concrete that we are using in the um, okay. uh, regular there's, construction. There's a lot of questions regarding like what additional testing did you do? Were, were there durability tests done? Were there freeze thawing tests done? Um, yes. Could you comment on um, any testing on like creep and shrinkage um, that was done? So we did freeze thaw test because it was one of the other requirement by NASA. So I don't know if you think we don't have time. I highly encourage everyone to email me 
I would be happy to answer your question. And also you can message me on LinkedIn. Again, I would be happy to answer all of them. So we did freeze and thaw test. And so NASA designed some requirements for freeze and thaw test to make sure if we pass those requirements, it means the material pass well. And our material passed all of those tests. It was working well on the freeze and thaw condition. We didn't do any shrinkage test. And one of the problem that we saw during the 3D printing of cylindrical tank was the um, uh, cracking on the surface of material. It was mostly plastic because of the plastic shrinkage. We did the construction the, in the very cold weather. And we saw that the surface of the material cracked very badly. However, the leakage test was passed for the uh, 3D printed tank, but we have very noticeable crack on the surface of the tank, mostly because of the plastic shrinkage and thermal cracks. That was because of the um, cold temperature, ambient temperature that we were facing. 